Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Tenacious V's podcast. This week, we are going to be discussing a fantastic Victorian-era woman, Ada Augusta Lovelace. She was so many things, a mathematician, a mother, a wife, and she was shot down a lot of her life. Like, she had a pretty rough go of things, but... We thought she was really amazing, and she did some pretty incredible stuff. She's called the first ever computer programmer and the mother of computers. I don't know. I got actually pretty inspired by this one, and I ended up talking quite a bit, so sorry for that. I really liked her. She was a really, really fun one to do, even though math is not my realm, and it was really hard to do the research for this one for me. Everything was really hard for me to understand as far as what she was doing and it's always good to get outside of your comfort zone but without further ado enjoy the episode and have a great day Welcome back to another episode of Tenacious V's podcast. This week we're going to be discussing a little bit more recent of a woman named Ada Lovelace. That's cool. Now let's get into what does Kayla know? Oh, I'm gonna. It's gonna turn into just me getting made fun of every time because every time I know the names that I know, and I can be excited, but I don't know. I don't know, guys. <laughs> Do you know like what era she's from? No. Or like what she's known for at all? No. Or where she's from? No, guys, that's what I'm saying. I know that I've heard about her, but this this goldfish brain just holds on to nothing. That's <laughs> that's why I need you guys. That's totally fair. <laughs> so she was born Ada or I mean Augusta Ada Byron on December tenth in eighteen fifty. She was born in what is now known as London. And her father was Lord Byron, pretty much the most famous British poet at that time. He left Ada and her mother, Annabelle Milbank Byron, when she was, like, less than five months old. Like, she was a baby baby. And he, like, dipped out. The marriage that they had was already a really unhappy one. He was pretty abusive, and he was an alcoholic. So good riddance. Yeah, yeah. Out. He, like, abused opiates, and he had, like, all sorts of um, extramarital affairs with men and women. Wow. Which was super funny because he was actually known for his romanticism huh. style of poetry. That's what he was, like, he was, like, one of the founders of that style. Jeez. Yeah. He was a, he was a guy. He was a character. <laughs> he sounds awful. I I'm pretty him. sure his name is George, George Gordon. Like, that's his real name. It's, yeah, George Gordon Byron. The sixth Baron Byron. Yeah, dude. Okay, (laughs) so reading all this information, you guys, they all have, like, four titles, and they're all, like, the Duchess of this and Baroness and Von Thing, and it's it's a lot of things. And I don't don't know Victorian (coughs) culture that well, and it's a little above my realm, honestly. Pick one and roll with it. Yeah, I don't understand why they have, like, seven different things going on. And then they're always, like, the ninth of something, and I'm like, I don't understand how it passes so far. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, like Kayla said, you know, the mom, Annabelle, was just, like, good riddance to him. She didn't want Ada to fall into the poetic madness that she called Lord Byron's condition whatever was wrong with him so she just didn't want her to end up like him so she got her like an extremely good education she got like mad tutors that were just like private expensive insane math and science tutors so she got her really well educated in mostly mathematics and like sciences to come to combat the poeticism right Ada was taught by the tutors, and she was also self-taught because she was just so fucking smart. Like, she just kept going, and all of her free time was dedicated to learning, regardless of if it was just, like, studying how birds worked or, like, writing down equations or whatever. I don't know what math people do. Sorry, guys. (laughs) This one was hard for me. If you're a math person, please let us know what you do. Yeah, Yeah, let us know if it's really awesome and we're missing out. But, yeah, so later in life, she started... Like, later in life, her education lasted till she was, like, 
14 and then she was just teaching herself and then anyways but she had a mentor augustus de morgan the first math professor ever at the university of london so like she had a pretty a prestigious education to say the least when she was a teen when she was a teen she, well, she was on... like 12 so like but before she had finished all of her schooling she went yeah. on um on a sort of like a tour of europe and um correspondence between Ada and her mother, you know, she found that she was obsessed with uh, flight drawings. They could tell from these letters that they were sending back and forth. Um, so she was really into these blueprints of these flight drawings and wanted to check it out because she found one that was for a steam-powered horse with No, wings. no, she made it. Shut up. Yeah, so she, she studied birds, like I said earlier, and how they flew, and then she started studying all sorts of different types of material that like could help propel something into flight. Like she was studying like silk and leaves mm -hmm. and things to fly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then she invented a steam powered horse. Yeah, it's like, like a blueprints are like crazy. A train. <laughs> so it's like oh a giant metal horse powered by it's steam. It's literally a horse. It's literally a horse. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Like a horse sized <clears> horse. I <throat> mean like iron horse. Like no, it's literally no, like a horse. A horse. Okay. And it has wings, so it's technically a Pegasus. Right. And it would fly, like it would fly people around in the air, like you would sit on a horse as this you would real? ride a horse. Mm -hmm. Well, she it was never made. But yeah, she the made machine blueprints. was never made. I need to, I need to be able to, <laughs> to discern that kind of stuff better from you guys. Sorry. <laughs> I just, no, uh, I'm so... so bad at reading your facial cues and like <laughs> where we're at in the story to know if that's real or not. I just get too excited hoping that's real. <laughs> yeah, no, she was just super obsessed with, you know, the flying aspect, was mm -hmm. really into it, the mechanics and everything that goes behind it. Yeah, I mean, she would always use her incredible intelligence to, like, make these drawings of things that she thinks she could, you know, potentially put into fruition, mm -hmm. but it just, um, at this point, hasn't been done yet. Right. I'll just put it that way. And she was 12. Like, she wasn't exactly somebody that had the means to go out and invent a giant steam-powered <laughs> mechanical horse. Yeah. That's so, an issue. Yeah. You know, that was a thing. Uh, but when she was 17, she met Charles Babbage. Like, dude, the names. Babbage, this, yeah. Right? Babbage. Babbage. Charles Babbage. Babbage Cabbage. Hey, but he's pretty sweet. <laughs> he was cool. He was, nice little he guy. He was an all right dude. He was, he was a good guy. <laughs> he was well, known as the father of computers, Nona. He was more than pretty cool. I mean, can you imagine, like, a villain named Charles Babbage? <laughs> like... <laughs> Um, but so she met him at a party when she was 17 and he was showing off a small piece of his, it's either called an analytical or a difference engine. And it's, um, super fucking complicated. It's like a computer before the idea of computers existed. Mm -hmm. It's literally like an enormous calculator, like probably as big as our apartment building. Like, wow. One of them would have been, like, 45 feet. They had, like, a miniature model, and it was, like, 10 feet by 10 feet. That's crazy. It was huge. But it was, like, to do complex math equations. It, it was, like, <laughs> algorithms. Um... It, it, it was so complicated that I can't even figure out how to work it to make it do the math mm -hmm. that I can't understand how to do. Right. You know It's, like, I mean? way like, too much. It's a lot. Way too it much. Is, she was brilliant. It's not, like, your iPhone calculator. No. It's, like, a... A whole well, it's like machine. a legit thing. It's not just like a that's yeah. We already know the answers in here, so yeah, you know. that's nuts. Yeah, they had to like put these cards in that would like have different holes in them that would t tell the machine what to do. Right. Yeah, because they didn't have like electronic screens. No, or... It was crazy, and that's they had like nuts. a printer, like a receipt paper printer mm -hmm. type thing. That's nuts. Yeah, but she like instantly understood it, and she instantly got the idea. And started working with him pretty closely soon after that. And, like, at this point, well, or at some point, like, he had, obviously, the prototype built. Mm -hmm. But he didn't have the funding to get the full thing built. Right. So he was looking for funding and asking and doing all these things. And Ada was like, hey. She sent him a letter. And she very politely suggested in her letter that hey, maybe you should stick to being the genius and, like, making the things, mm -hmm. and I'll go plead our case to get the funding. 
And he was like, hard no. Yeah. <laughs> so in 1835, she married William King a Baron. She didn't marry Charles Babbage? Saw that? Oh, I see a face. No, they're just, no, they're just, they're just homies. They're just Man. like, I was like, like oh, we're a great love story <laughs> associate. No, she married a dude named William King. Um, they had three children, two boys, one girl. Um, when he became the Earl of Lovelace, Ada became Ada Lovelace. Wow. Okay. The Countess. See, I was so wrong. She I was mean, the Countess of Lovelace. Wow. Yeah. What a badass title. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. I was so wrong. I totally like had her name in my head associated with like some outlaw chick that I know that I know about. Bam, yeah, like bam, bam. not like not like rootin' totin', but like you know, <laughs> a old timey Victorian like thief or something. I don't know. No, I mean, she I had it all mixed up in my head. Not really a thief, but she kind of was like a. Like a bad girl, because back then the ladies were supposed to be like poised girl. and pretty mm-hmm. and you know doing everything right. She was, she was questioning very, science. <laughs> she was very forward, very out there. Mm-hmm. It was like we could do this. We can make this flying machine, you know, right. which was kind of her whole epitome, I guess, of her her life. But um, so when she first married William, she took much time off of the world of academia to start her family. She did still study math, you know, but she was mostly focused on the kiddos. She would also have the nanny take the kids on their to their vacation home, and so she um, could work, you mm-hmm. know, when she did find the time for it. Um, and she was working on translating an article about the, the analytical or difference machine or engine, um, and the article was by an Italian military engineer named Luigi Minabra. So... She translated He's a pretty the, famous dude. Yeah, and so she translated this whole thing, you know, to English so she can understand it. It was written in French um, by an Italian dude. <laughs> <laughs> Along with translating, Ada added her own notes, equalizing three times the length of the original. So her notes were longer than the actual, like... That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Dissected it. Her notes are what she's, like, <clears throat> ultimately most famous for. That mm-hmm. people, you know, couldn't believe that she, she was so forward-thinking. Mm-hmm. They were pretty amazing. Um, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. And I, they're actually known as just notes. Yeah. Like, there's no, like, special, like, you know, Ada's notes on the relativity. Or, yeah. Or, no, it's just, just Ada's notes. Notes. The, and she signed everything A-A-L, which I think is really cool. Augusta Ada Lovelace. Oh, that is cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In signing it by A-A-L, she was also hoping to get more recognition so that people wouldn't immediately associate it with the woman's writings. Mm-hmm. So they would see it and just be like, oh, just random initials. It was probably a man. Um, They're very Aaron smart. It was a man. Well, Lewis, I know him. He's a tough guy. <laughs> Not even thinking. Right. Yeah. Back to her notes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they were... So what she was most famous for, she kind of expands on what she believes like a computer can do and um, has been used for way more than anyone has ever suggested like that it could ever, like a computer could do way more than we could ever think that it could. So obviously at this time you, they're talking about the engine because right? computer, yeah, like, like, the like, idea of a computer doesn't exist. No. Like it's, but like the fact that this type of machinery or whatever can do more than just math. Mm-hmm. Can do like, can process other things, I guess. Store data. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Her big one was that it could compose music. Oh, that's sweet. Like, that you could program it to create and, like, make music. Mm-hmm. And also, like, create and, like, you know, be viewable or however, like, pictures and text. Yeah. She was trying to think of it in a way of, like, we could make a machine that will... <laughs> that will record this podcast. Yeah. And, and she would lose her mind on Facebook. Oh, <laughs> like, dude. Seeing what all of her, like, hard working hours and, like... Just tireless brain energy mm-hmm. is just like put forth in just memes, like memes all the memes, and, and just the crappy music we have <laughs> yeah. nowadays. She, but oh. dude, if she could watch like this, like yeah. the sound bites She'd get be recorded, so this would be. I think it'd be pretty amazing oh, to bring her now. Yeah, absolutely. It blows my mind. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Just watching the sound waves, you know, I can only imagine. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, obviously, she was extremely intelligent. And she tried to use this to get a monetary advantage. She became addicted to gambling on horse racing in the 1940s. She once lost $3,200 on one horse. Damn. She more than likely started gambling to get money to build the machine with Babbage that they were like mm-hmm. denied funding for. 
but then just like got really into it and i think she thought she was ma- playing some mathematical odds that right. just don't exist in horse she racing made a fine horse yeah right? <laughs> she would have won every time every time that's crazy dude thirty two hundred dollars in like today's money is a lot that's insane yeah but that's like crazy. back then that's, that was like so much money i mean like they equivalent of i mean at least 20 plus grand easy really easy. yeah Oh god, guys! That's, I'm saying like ten grand. No, you That's guys. I'm gonna find out. You keep talking. I'm gonna find out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I need to know. Yeah, her like wild side <laughs> wasn't just exclusive to gambling. She also became addicted to opiates, just like her father. But hers were prescribed for pain that she had been in for years. Mm-hmm. And. <laughs> It ends up being pretty sad, actually. Um, She had never had good health her entire life. She'd gotten sick a lot. She hadn't gotten to do a lot of things. Um, But she most likely died at the age of 36 of uterine cancer. Mm -hmm. And she was the same age as her father. And she actually was buried right next to him. Because she had always been sort of like weirdly obsessed with him since she never really got to meet him. Right. She didn't know... How bad he truly was, you know, she was missing that. I don't know. Her mom was kind of crazy. And like I said, like <laughs> she pushed her so hard in the opposite direction. And she wasn't very like, she was pretty forthcoming with why, mm-hmm. you know, so I don't know. I think it's just kind of like a, what, uh, like, what are your thoughts, Julia? I mean, if I didn't know my father, it'd be something that would haunt me forever. You know, like right. what could life have been like? Could I have changed him, made him a better man? Like, why did he want to leave so often? Try to get more behind, like, the whys of, you know, him, especially with him being so well-known. Like, you're the daughter of a famous poet, you know, this dude. Like, obviously you want to know what was going on in their mind and you have a relationship with them. Well, yeah. I mean, I think I would personally feel pretty strongly attached to somebody like that, you know? Well, yeah, and just, like, how how smart she was and how much she was interested by the world. You know, she probably saw him as an artist and saw him for what was positive and sympathized with him like wow are you know us smart people are tortured souls that's what happens when you know a tortured artist trope if you will well and it's like a different kind of intelligence because mm-hmm. he really was creative like had like the creative mm-hmm. was that the left side of your brain and then um, like the logical analytical is the right side i believe so I have no idea. But I've also heard so much misinformation on that. Yeah. I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, like, two different kinds <laughs> of things. But she was so creative, too. Like, always coming up with new ideas. That's true. The way mm-hmm. she expanded on those notes and the fact that she, before anyone else, thought that a computer could do more than just math. Mm-hmm. Like, she looked at the automatic loom that had been created and how it was programmed with those pun- with these punch cards. Mm-hmm. And she looked at that and saw that it could make like beautiful roses and leaves and things like that. And she was like, wow, this type of machine could also be programmed to make things. Like it can right. show us images. It can like display text that can send messages. Like mm-hmm. we could make music with this. Like and... the pianos, the self-playing piano. Exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. She just went so far above and beyond what anyone had previously thought about it. And she actually didn't even get any sort of recognition until a hundred years later. Mm-hmm. That's so sad. Yeah. I hate those stories. I'm just like, they never, they never knew. It's fucked up. <laughs> they never knew. But now, there's actually an older type of computer programming code that is named after Ada. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I mean, when she was also, like, kind of like a fun little tidbit, when she was really ill and taking a lot of the opiates, mm-hmm. um, she started to study the effects it was having on her physically and mentally and theorized that you could create a numerical scan of the brain to be able to accurately track exactly what was happening. Wow. Yeah, so, so she, she was, like, thought about herself. MRIs already. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And that's, like, the, the self-awareness there, to be, like, you know, out of your mind on opiates, dying, basically, mm-hmm. yeah. and to still be, like, this is fascinating. When it was crazy because she out. was pretty much bedridden, and she <clears> was literally just keeping journals because she, she realized, like, her whole personality changed. She wow. became a new person, mm-hmm. basically. And she That's started amazing. recording that. She started keeping track of like how it was affecting her body and her mind separately and was starting to theorize of like essentially an MRI machine. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, like there's gotta be a way to show to see how it to changed see her what's brain happening. and her body. Well, and, and her... you know, like quite honestly, at that time, you know, we had 
a lot of medical knowledge as far as anatomy goes and things like that, but to have the foresight of how much a brain is the person yeah, and not the other way around because the idea at the time, you know, was oh, you have your soul and your soul is you. Didn't really understand everything a brain did. They obviously couldn't scan them and watch, you know, the way they worked. And also when people are losing their personality and having that big of brain changes, the fact that she could even recognize what was happening mm-hmm. and not just get lost to it is insane. There's so much just awareness there. Well, I mean, it's also just so insane that, like, like we were saying, like, imagine if she was around nowadays. Yeah. And could see something like this. Oh, my God. a computer. Or, you know, say if she was born maybe a few decades later or she was born as a man, like, mm-hmm. how much further we would be advanced right now. That's crazy to think about. Yeah, because right now, like, if, if she was doing, I guess, like, ratio is the word I want, but it's not what I mean. Like, re- the relativity of what she was doing back then applied to right now is crazy like we it'd, it'd be like in prometheus when they have like the <clears throat> the surgery coffin thing and it just scans you and does surgery like right we'd have so many things i'm sorry what that's crazy you never seen prometheus no what is it about dude it's like a it's like is the it alien gods? prequel no no fuck that. no but they have this like glass coffin thing and you literally hop in it and you just hit scan, and it scans your whole body and figures out what's wrong with you just and just fixes, fixes it. it. It just performs surgery. It can, like, I don't know everything oh. it can do. Well, that does but, sound pretty magical, right? Yeah. There. Or what was that movie with uh, Matt Damon where Elysium? That's the thing. Oh, I Did never you saw see that? that? One. Uh-huh. Dude, it's crazy. Even with cancers, like, you could literally go in and it would just give you, like, a 10 minute scan and just completely cure your body of cancer. Yeah, because she's mm-hmm. making these kind of thoughts back in the 1800s. Yeah, that's like, crazy. That's yeah. crazy. But then I think it's even <clears throat> sort of crazier to imagine just, like, what if she was born as a man in the same time period? Like, mm-hmm. how different would it have gone? Like, do People you would think, have taken her more seriously. Yeah, people would have taken her more seriously. She mm-hmm. probably would have gotten that funding. They she would probably have made that machine. Have. She like, probably would have. Maybe we would be, like, decades farther... But, not even decade. We'd be like a hundred fucking years farther Easy. with computers. Easy. A hundred and twenty. Because imagine what's going to happen 50 years from now with our current technology. Yeah. We need another Ada mom. Lovelace. <laughs> Bring her <laughs> back. That's crazy, dude. But it is sad, you know, if if she, like, thinking back to when, um, what's his name? Charles Babbage. Like, when I let her go out and advocate for them. I right. can kind of see why he said no, but at the same time, it's like, if she was a dude, she could have just them two together. Them two together could have gone and marketed and nobody would have bat- batted an eye at it, you know? And that's just really, really sad. <laughs> but yeah, it sucks that he wouldn't let her try. At least try. Like, at least he wasn't getting shot. anywhere. Why not let her have a try? Well, obviously, mm-hmm. she's well-versed. It's not like she's going to stumble over her words. or. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, she was very smart. Yeah. She was also just friends with, like, Charles Dickens and all sorts of people all throughout the academic world. It didn't mm-hmm. just... She wasn't just limited to science and math. Like, she had friends in every department of life Mm -hmm. and high up that are well known to this day. So, it's, it doesn't make sense that he would have prevented her. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. And it's just, it's sad too, because like thinking about her disguising her notes and everything like that, like, it's sad to think because women literally still do that today. Like, Mm -hmm. they still go other, you know, under either pseudonyms or just, don't release like a picture of themselves on their books and just go off of their initials initials to get you know get a fair chance and that's just so crazy that you know that's something she faced there and obviously it's way different there (laughs) it's obviously way different back then but yeah we're still facing that so for her to be able to break through that at that time is incredible Mm -hmm. that's so so amazing i think she was a pretty solid lady i mean you know gambling and drug addiction <laughs> yeah i know well you know that's she i hope she did it at first to help like advance what she was doing but i mean it really like i feel like there's a lot of weight to just like the tortured soul thing you know like when somebody is that far ahead of their time and yeah especially in a time where religion backs so much of your reality and she's sitting here thinking like okay, no, what's happening to my brain? What's happening physically to me? Like, what, you know, how does the brain work? I want to find out. It's amazing. And she had to have just felt so ostracized. 
Like, how do we make, make a machine to fly? <laughs> yeah, like, even, because that's, you know, that's not, like, pub talk. <laughs> like, yeah. Even if, you know, she, like yeah, <laughs> like, even if she wasn't necessarily ostracized from her community, she had to have been so lonely. Yeah, right. I mean, especially because this is years before the Wright brothers had their first flight. Mm-hmm. So, the, like, planes weren't even around yet. She Everyone was, was like, <laughs> flying. Oh, <laughs> oh, capital idea. Who so are you, funny. Leonardo da Vinci? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. What a farce. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is she was like, we can create machines to do this shit for us. Yeah. You know? Guys, we totally should have done this whole episode in British accents. Oh, oh my god. Really embrace the time period. Oh, hindsight, next, man. Next time. We should have dressed up. <laughs> should have dressed up. <laughs> just in our Full same Victorian outfits, garb. but just with collars on. We were like the big poofy wigs and powder. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, thanks for coming by to learn about Miss Lovelace. We'll see you soon. Thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate each and every time you guys come and give us a listen. If you enjoyed that, you can give us a follow on Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, at Tenacious V's Podcast. All the good places. As usual, this episode was spoken, written, and recorded by Nona, Julia, and Kayla. All musical contributions are done by our friend and Denver rapper Staple Milk. Come back soon for some more mysteries, ladies and gentlemen.